In today's video, we are going to be talking about polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as PCOS, what causes it and how to reverse it. PCOS is the most common cause of infertility. In Western countries, one out of every 10 women of childbearing age has PCOS. Symptoms include missed periods, weight gain, excessive hair growth, and acne. Women with PCOS have difficulty getting pregnant and often seek out infertility treatment. But here's the thing, it is possible to reverse PCOS with lifestyle changes. One study followed 11 women with PCOS for six months. The study involved a change in diet, and by the end, all the women who completed the study lost weight, lowered their free testosterone, and their fasting insulin. Two of the women even got pregnant during the study, despite having previously struggled with infertility. PCOS can be reversed in weeks, if not months, with a few simple but significant tweaks to your lifestyle. In today's video, we are going to talk about what PCOS is, what causes it, and five steps you can take to reverse it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that does it all. Head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate to start your free trial today. Polycystic ovarian syndrome was once a rare condition, but it is becoming more and more common. Women of all ages can suffer from it, even those who have went through menopause. And unfortunately, most of these women are told it is just something they will have to live with for the rest of their lives and manage only with drugs. But the truth is PCOS is not a life sentence. When you address the root cause, it can be reversed. We're going to start off today talking about the symptoms of PCOS and how it is diagnosed. Then we will get into the cause of it and we'll finish off talking about five steps you can take to reverse it. And make sure to stick around until the end because tip number four might surprise you. What is PCOS? PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. To be formally diagnosed with PCOS, you have to have two out of the three following main symptoms. Irregular periods, hormonal imbalance with high androgen levels, androgen being male sex hormones such as testosterone, and cysts in the ovaries. If you suspect you might have PCOS but haven't been formally diagnosed, here are some of the symptoms. Irregular or missed periods, as we already discussed, heavy periods, acne, skin tags, darkening of the skin, male pattern baldness, excess hair growth on the face and stomach specifically, and difficulty losing weight. Some people with PCOS might have all of these symptoms and other people only a few. And PCOS is not only an issue if you're trying to get pregnant, it can have other side effects as well, including sleep apnea, weight gain, depression, and even cancer, specifically endometrial cancer. And for women with PCS who are able to get pregnant, they are at a greater risk of miscarriages and twice as likely to deliver their baby prematurely. So it is safe to say that PCOS does not only affect your health, it affects the health of your baby as well. What causes PCOS? There is a lot of confusion surrounding PCOS. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of women who are diagnosed are told that they will only be able to manage the symptoms and that they are stuck with it for life. A lot of times they are prescribed a medication such as metformin and drugs like this can help to improve symptoms, but they do not address the root cause. But do we even know what causes PCOS? There must be some reason that the rate at which we are seeing it is increasing. And we do have an answer. At the root of PCOS is insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone responsible for lowering blood sugar and storing glucose in our cells. Every time we eat, blood sugar rises, and as a result, the pancreas pumps out insulin. But insulin resistance occurs when our insulin levels are elevated for long periods of time. 
Our cells stop responding to insulin in the way that they should. They stop accepting insulin, and this leaves us with elevated levels. And this ties in with PCOS because high insulin or insulinemia is what causes the symptoms that define PCOS. Every month, just before ovulation, there should be a big spike in the hormone estrogen. All estrogen is made from testosterone, but high insulin levels block the ovaries from converting it, and the spike in estrogen doesn't happen. So you do not ovulate, and the eggs remain in the ovaries and become cysts, and you are left with high testosterone levels as well. And those are the three main symptoms of PCOS, irregular periods, high testosterone, and ovarian cysts. By addressing and reversing insulin resistance, PCOS reverses as well. How to reverse PCOS. Okay, so now we've talked about what PCOS is, the symptoms, and what causes it. Now let's get into the good stuff. How to reverse it. As previously mentioned, insulin resistance is the root cause of PCOS. So that is what we want to address. Our cells become resistant to insulin when there's too much of it circulating. When we lower our insulin levels, our cells become more sensitive to it. The key to reversing PCOS is to keep your insulin low or as low as possible. So let's talk about some steps you can take to do that. Number one, reduce carbohydrates. Low carb diets have become extremely popular in recent years, especially for weight loss, but also for PCOS. And I think a large part of this is due to the fact that so many people have undiagnosed insulin resistance. The reason reducing your carb intake helps improve insulin resistance is because carbohydrates are the macronutrient that stimulates insulin the most. Eating carbohydrates spikes insulin drastically, while protein spikes it moderately and fat not at all. So if you're trying to keep insulin low, it makes sense to reduce the foods that cause it to rise the most. Do you remember that study that I mentioned at the start of the video where women changed their diet for six months and their PCOS symptoms improved? The diet change they made was switching to a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet where they ate less than 20 grams of carbs per day. The study pointed out that hyperinsulinemia appeared to be the cause of the increase in androgen and that the reduction in hyperinsulinemia was due to the diet change. The researchers concluded a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet led to a significant reduction in weight, free testosterone, and fasting serum insulin in women with obesity and PCOS over a six month period. Now that study reduced carbohydrate intake significantly, but you might not have to reduce it so much if you don't want to. A 2017 review paper looked at studies where participants with PCOS ate less than 45% of their calories from carbs. This is significantly more than the 20 gram a day limit in the previous study, but still less than what the average person nowadays consumes. The study concluded, Reducing carbohydrate load can reduce circulating insulin levels, improve hormonal imbalance, and resume ovulation to improve pregnancy rates compared to the usual diet. Now, it is really important to note that when you reduce your dietary carbohydrates, you need to increase your dietary fat. This is because in the absence of carbs in our diet, our bodies use fat for energy, both dietary and stored body fat. If you try to eat low carb and low fat, you will most likely feel fatigued and miserable. Now, as I said, you do not have to reduce carbs drastically in order to yield results. Even a modest reduction will help. But eating high carb foods, especially processed ones, such as cereal, crackers, and grains, is part of what leads to insulin resistance initially. If you stick to whole foods, such as meat, fish, eggs, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, your carbohydrate intake will reduce drastically without you having to count or track. But you still might see greater results if you reduce carbohydrates more. Number two, eat carbs last. Now, if you are still a bit wary about reducing carbohydrates in your diet, there's another strategy that works as well. Eating carbohydrate-rich foods at the end of your meal after your protein and non-starchy vegetables makes the insulin response a lot less drastic. One study done on type 2 diabetics had participants eat the same meal three days in a row. On the first day, they ate the carbohydrate portion of the meal, and then 10 minutes later had the protein and the vegetable portion. 
On the second day, they ate the protein and vegetables first, waited 10 minutes, and then ate the carbs. And on the final day, they ate everything together. Insulin levels were tested before eating and after eating, every 30 minutes for the following three hours. Insulin levels were significantly lower after the meal when the carbohydrate portion was eaten last. So if you cannot bear the thought of giving up potatoes and bread, consider at least eating them last. Number three, build muscle. Now I do think that diet and what you do eat and don't eat is the most important factor when it comes to insulin resistance, but exercise can help as well. This is beneficial for two reasons. The first is that when you are exercising, your muscle cells are able to absorb glucose without insulin. And the second reason is that more muscle mass means your body can store more glucose. This is because our muscles are where most glucose is stored in the body. So if you have more muscle, you have more space for excess glucose to be stored, and this can help reverse the resistance. Now in terms of the type of exercise you should be doing, resistance training has been shown to be the most beneficial when compared to cardio, minute per minute. The most effective type of resistance training is up for debate, but training with either weights or body weight can be effective when done correctly. And here's the best part. You do not have to spend hours or even one hour at the gym every day killing yourself. Even 10 to 15 minutes a couple times a week of basic body weight exercises such as push-ups, pull-ups, and squats can yield results. A 2019 study looked at the effect short duration resistance training had on insulin sensitivity in overweight men. They did three resistance training sessions a week for six weeks, with each session only lasting 15 to 20 minutes. During the workout, they did one singular repetition of nine different exercises at 80% of their one rep max. After the six weeks, participants saw an increase in their insulin sensitivity. These men did one single rep of nine different exercises and saw improvements to their insulin sensitivity. Now, of course, this study was done with men who can't have PCOS, but the same insulin benefits can be obtained by women as well. So if you are currently killing yourself doing cardio at the gym, it might be more beneficial to focus on building muscle instead. Now, before we get into the last two tips on how to reverse PCOS, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to build a professional website and run your business. I have been using Squarespace for over two years and it has made running my online coaching business seamless. One of the best things about Squarespace is just how customizable it is. You can start with one of their award-winning templates and adjust everything from the fonts and color scheme to the layout and animations. It is extremely easy to use, even with no experience in web design whatsoever. Another great feature is that Squarespace has built-in SEO tools that help to make sure your website is found by the right people. You can start your free trial today without having to enter your credit card details or anything by heading to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate. And when you love it and decide to launch, use code healthcoachkate to save 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Number four, eat more salt. Okay, so I did tell you earlier that you wouldn't expect tip number four, but the relationship between salt and insulin resistance and PCOS is fascinating. Salt is made up of sodium and chloride, both of which are essential electrolytes that our bodies need. But for some reason, salt has been linked to negative health outcomes, such as high blood pressure, although there is little evidence supporting this. Most people do not see a change in their blood pressure when they eat more or less salt. When they do see a change, however, is when they reduce their sugar consumption and lose weight, even if there is no change to their salt intake. In his book, The Salt Fix, Dr. James D. Nicola Antonio outlines how consuming too little salt can shift the body into a semi-starvation mode and cause insulin resistance. Most people can stand to eat more salt without negative consequences. When we consume salt, our body has no problem flushing the excess out. But when we consume too little salt, our bodies have to work overtime to recycle the salt that is already in our system to meet our needs. One study done on diabetics split participants into two groups. One consumed 3,000 milligrams of sodium a day and the other 6,000 milligrams. 
Those in the higher salt group saw greater improvements to their insulin resistance. The study concluded that an abundant sodium intake may improve glucose tolerance and insulin resistance, especially in diabetic, salt sensitive, and or medicated essential hypertension subjects. And salt is especially important if you choose to follow tip number one and reduce your salt intake. When we reduce carbohydrates in the diet, the body stores less water and in turn less electrolytes. So consuming enough on a daily basis, especially when it comes to salt is key. Dr. James D. Nicola Antonio recommends consuming between 3,000 and 6,000 milligrams of sodium per day. Number five, stop snacking. And finally, tip number five is to stop snacking. There is this misconception that eating more often throughout the day is somehow a good idea. The truth is this strategy is doing more harm than good, especially when it comes to PCOS. As we mentioned earlier, when we're trying to address PCOS, we're really addressing insulin resistance. And to reverse insulin resistance, we need to keep insulin low. Now, every time we eat, insulin raises. So if we are eating at short intervals throughout the day, insulin is constantly being bumped up and does not have a chance to come back down. And this constant eating throughout the day that so many of us think is normal is part of the reason why we become insulin resistant. Intermittent fasting, which is not eating for a period of time each day, usually between 12 and 22 hours, and condensing all of your meals into a shorter time period has been shown to be extremely effective for reversing insulin resistance, with some studies showing significant improvements in as little as two weeks. Now, I do have a whole playlist on intermittent fasting that you can check out here, but if you're not quite ready to try that, simply skipping snacks throughout the day can make a big difference as well. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know if you have PCOS. Is there anything you've tried that has helped or didn't help? Have you tried any of the strategies I spoke about in this video today? Let me know down below. By commenting on my videos, it helps to boost engagement. So anything you wanna comment down below, I really appreciate it. And thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now, if you did find this video helpful, you might also like my videos in my insulin resistance playlist. You can check it out here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.